This is Real Sales Talk. Real sales advice from real sales practitioners. Giving you tips on how to dominate your sales quota are your co host Sean Mitchell and Phil Keen. We don't have a process for referrals at most companies. I go into a company, I say, what's your referral process? They have no, well, what do you mean? I think that, I think that goes back to the premise that why do salespeople suck at prospecting? I mean, number one reason why they suck at prospecting is they don't actually do it. If you are successful and nobody knows in, 2000, in 2016, 20, 2025, you're not successful. If you ever want to find out what's going on in the company, get in the car and spend a day with the top three salespeople. You'll find out in five minutes. Because you can't be a trusted advisor without two things, trust and advice. I mean, you need both of them. What is going on, Real Sales Talk family? We are back with episode 022 of Tech Talk. So, International Women's Day. Sean, are you excited as I am? I, I'm, I mean, I, I mentioned this on the um, interview with Katie Lance. I, I think... I think there's there definitely needs to be more women in the sales industry, and um, we've had a he heck of a a run here this year with some really really great uh, women thought leaders yeah. who add massive value to to the industry. Yeah, if you look at the people we've had on, so we had Katie Lance was awesome, awesome, awesome conversation around social. The always wonderful, beautiful Trish Pertuzzi, uh, possibly my favorite sales leader of anybody of anywhere, she is awesome. Uh, Nadia Rashid from Marketo, she was great. Mary Lou Tyler uh, from Predictable Prospecting, uh, Kristen Shivago, Amy Schmidauer, Ellis Hyman, uh, Shannon Milligan. We have had awesome, awesome women. Uh, so happy International Women's Day to all of our women's real sales talkers. Uh, and uh, we're, we're super excited to have you guys in the sales community. Uh, and we hope that you guys continue to share your story and however we can support you. Sean, I would love to continue to do that. Uh, so thanks guys for that. Uh, yeah, totally. Uh, incredibly thankful. Um, as I said, I think there should be uh, more, more a, a bigger light spotlight put on um, what, what women the value that women women add to to the sales industry, and really, there there should be more women in leadership as well. Uh, so I hope that continues to grow and increase. Today, I'm going to be talking about a, a service that I came across just an hour or two ago. I've seen their logo on a couple of things, a couple of advertisements, and I thought that's an interesting name and an interesting logo. So what am I talking about, might you be wondering? If you're watching our, the YouTube version of this, the video version of this, or the Facebook version, of course, you'll be able to, to actually see this. Uh, if you're listening to the audio version, then you will, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll try and make sure and, and describe this. Which, by the way, Phil, I need to mention one thing here that we've been working on. And and we 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 turned this around. We talked about a w getting a website for Real Sales Talk about a week ago, and we made it happen. So for those that are are, are have have not seen it yet, you need to go to realsalestalk.live and check it out. Um, you're going to be able to catch up on previous episodes. You'll be able to subscribe to our newsletter. And um, you'll also be able to find all the pl platforms that we are putting out our content. So too many to go through on this particular episode, but just go to our website and take a look. So we're, we're going to be building that out too. All right. Sales Folk is the name of the company. And uh, what are they? They're a... They're, they're basically a service to help you craft your sales emails. So I've seen emails, email crafting for prospecting, for nur lead nurturing, and so on. And so what I think is interesting about Sales Folk is, uh, bes besides their, their logo, which I just have to show you here. I don't know why they don't have it at the top. I don't know if you, I don't know if you caught that, but when I hovered over the little goat, it made the ghost sound. So um, 
really, really interesting. And in, in their tagline, be a goat, not a sheep, I think that's an interesting one. Like, do they mean an actual goat, or do they mean like goat, like greatest of all time acronym? I, I like be be a goat greatest of all time, not not a sheep, not a follower. So yeah, I take that as like I take that as be a goat as as don't just follow the herd, don't do what everybody else does, which is this batch and blast template email send you what everybody else sends you. It's be unique and and be yourself when you're sending an email, and that's kind of the the dialogue I heard last week at Rainmaker for Sales Loft and and, and conversations I had with other sales leaders um, is that is. You just got to differentiate yourself in a little bit. Uh, we're going to have him back on soon. Morgan Ingram and I have this conversation. It doesn't take a lot to differentiate who you are. So sales folk does that, but I can get off on a tangent with that all day long. But we'll save it for a uh, another talk. Cool, cool. Um, so, so check these guys out at salesfolk.com. And they've got a few interesting things here. Uh, the one that's that, that's I'm most interested in is kind of gleaning from some of their research and some of their feedback on what emails are getting the best responses, um, and uh, they they also have an interesting hall of shame. So maybe some emails that they've come across or received um, that that could be lessons of things not to do. So take a look at those guys. I think that they're interesting. I, I just came across them today, so I can't say that I've used them personally or have too much exposure to their service, but um, it may be something that may be worth uh, our listeners' time to take a look at. So there you have it. Phil, what yeah. about awesome. you? What are you going to be talking about today? Uh, so I I have ADD like crazy, and uh, I'm trying to, to stay focused during the day. I, I found an app uh, called Self Control. One of my favorite apps. Uh, let me see if I actually can share and show you how it works. Um, but I'll share their site first. So let's see, application, my entire screen. All right, you guys should see Self Control. Uh, so Self Control is an app, it's for Mac. There's a, there is a Windows version as well. It's not called Self Control, but if you search um, websites or focus um, for Windows, you can find something like this. Uh, and they actually point you, I think, on their website. You can navigate to something that's a like Windows version. What Self Control is is actually an app that allows you to uh, any website that you would potentially navigate while you're doing things. So let me see if I can share it with you guys, uh, the actual application, and then show you in use of how it works. One of my favorite apps, so it's pretty cool. All right, Self Control. You guys should see the little Self Control uh, screen. Uh, let's see. So what it actually has? There's a blacklist that you can put together. So you can see, so Facebook, ESPN, I'm a Chicago Bulls fan, White Sox fan, Bears, Blackhawks, all of those things I go to, BuzzFeed, Twitter, uh, the list goes on for a while. So we take all of those things that you that you know get distracted for your for, for your day or, or cause you to just interrupt things that you're working on. Uh, you actually can set this time. So it's two hours or an hour or 11 hours and 45 minutes. It actually goes into your computer. So I actually don't want the rest of the day. So let's save it three hours. There's three hours left to my work day. It's 3 p.m. I want to be done by 6 p.m. So I'm hit start. And it actually tells me to lock my computer. So I lock my computer. I no longer can go to anything that's on that blacklist. Well, I, uh, well I'm, I'm locked until three hours is over. So once the three hours is up, let me go back to my, my screen so you guys can see my So you my, have to create the list. You have to tell it what you... What, what you don't want to visit while you're focusing on that particular task. You can also do the opposite. So you can create a whitelist that says, I only want these websites to be available. So if you're somebody that only works in like a salesforce.com or there's an application that you do most of your work out of, um, so a prospect.io or a sales loft or whatever for, for an SDR crowd, uh, Salesforce for the AE crowd, whatever that, that software they're using, you can block just that one or just whitelist that one and everything else is blocked. Uh, I like the opposite approach. So for things like um, I only use LinkedIn when I'm prospecting and I use like a Zoom Info or Discover Org or whatever other data source you have, you can block or white, sorry, you whitelist those and then you have all those available. Or it's just, hey, I just wanna be more productive and I know that I'll get on Twitter and see what Sean's up to and I'll end up having a conversation with Sean, like that stuff distracts me. So it's, I'm gonna block just Twitter or here's all the, all the sports pages I go to, things that, that just cause me mayhem, I guess, and cause me problems uh, and give me lack, that my lack of focus starts to go uh, as soon as I have these, these sites. So, so is, it, is it just 
websites, or can you also block applications on your computer? So I was researching this uh, to see if there's any other applications that are like it out there for Windows. I didn't know the name of one of them, uh, but I can. I, there, there is a, there's a few that are out there, but I, I, I haven't used them, so I don't want to make a recommendation on any of them. This is super simple. This is you download it. You can just set websites, block websites. There is a couple out there. There's one called Focus, which I haven't used yet, that allows you to work. So I can pick a single application that works for me. I just want email to be up, or if I just want my browser to work and nothing else, like you can block apps as well. So maybe you do two or three at a time. Um, that could be interesting. I, I like the idea of doing this. I'd love to see it actually go further into, I want to block email. I want to block other apps. Applications. I want to block every other website. So I think there's something out there. Let's talk audience has this and knows that this exists. Uh, or if you build it, I will buy it from you. Uh, <laughs> so so go ahead and anything you can make it so I can I can live in a silo and just work on the things I need to work on. Uh, that'd be great. So yeah, yeah. I actually uh, on the same note, I I my my lint I'm giving up right. I'm actually giving up bringing my laptop and my phone to meetings. So I'm only bringing a notebook into that meeting and trying to focus and have dialogue and conversation in, that, in those meetings. So I'm going to try it for 40 days and see how it goes. Cool. I like that one. It's good. Um, we just published, I, I just published today, the Matt Bertuzzi interview on Lightning Sales Ops. So that should be in your, in your podcast inbox. Um, what, 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 do we have, what do we have coming down the, uh, the pike? What's, what's, what, what are we working on? So Matt Bertuzzi was great. Um, we just did one today. Tell us a little bit. So I wasn't on there. Couldn't make it today. But we just did, we were do one today. We're going to publish it next week. Tell us about that podcast. Yeah. Yeah. So we, um, we, we interviewed Dave Gerhardt, who's the director of marketing for a software company called Drift, which is a, a, a sales chat uh, product. And we talked about the importance of lead response time. And uh, well, I don't want to give it away, give away too much, but um, just talked about the value of of following up quickly with leads and how um, all people, uh, society is becoming um, uh, is is in many cases looking for instant responses and instant communication. And so, whether that's following up with with uh, a lead by phone by email, or in the case of Drift, the service they provide is chat, following up by chat, um, quicker response is, is better. And so he tells the story about how their webinar service provider lost their business because they didn't return his phone call, but two days after he had inquired, and another company, which he mentions in, in, the, uh, in the episode, uh, responds immediately. And they get his business because of that. So, uh, really, really, really good topic. We hadn't covered something like this before in depth. So, um, they was was extremely knowledgeable. That that one uh, should come out at the latest next Wednesday. We have another one in the hopper. Uh, there's a gentleman by Jim Brown, uh, who is a great sales trainer out of Indianapolis, Indiana, uh, and he's going to talk about overcoming objections and handling objections. I have sat with him and had these conversations, and, and he's coached me through things to, to say and how to say it. So this is going to be a world-class, um, very, very, very well-done podcast. And, and uh, he also has a podcast called Sales Tuners, which I mentioned a couple times on, on our, our previous sales talk. Check out Jim Brown. Awesome content. Uh, I'm excited to have him on. Good friend of mine, but just crazy insightful, smart guy. So you guys should be on the lookout for that one as well. Cool. All right. Well, thanks for tuning in, everyone. We'll see you on the next Real Sales Talk episode.